Hey folks, hope everything's going well for you towards the end of the week. We finally have that Games Workshop story in now. And yeah, let's get into it, shall we? Uh, there will be, I've been told this, this is a pretty heavy one and a personal one, so there will be no ad read today. Uh, but if you like what I do, then the subscribe button is down below, the Patreon is down below too. I love you all, let's get into it, shall we? It's going to be one of them days. It is Friday though, so you know, I hope you are all having a wonderful end of your week it, it has been a not not a tough one but a busy one this week very 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 busy and it just it just gets more busy for educators out there especially in the private sector oh my god oh my god at the moment uh, but if you are working over the weekend to support everybody please take some time for yourself no we all appreciate it thank you very much especially if you work in my local subway because you're going to get a pounding later on when i want when i when i march in through the door that sounded wrong. Moving on. Cantor Hal says, and thank you very much for sending this in, mate. I've only read the first half of this, and I it was really well written, so I, I just stopped reading, and uh, I haven't read the second half of it yet. So um, it is pretty heavy. So those of you, not in a nervous disposition, but those of you who are suffering from depression and things may, may, be find, may, may find something of note in here that is up for you, or trauma or anything like that. So let's jump in. So, Cantor Hal says, uh, this, is, this one is a bit of a short hobby nightmare, uh, but also I found it really hard to write about. I am in a bit of a state, so bear with me. No problem, man, no problem. Absolutely no problem at all. And again, yeah, it did take him a little while to write this out, but it does come across as well, so it, it's pretty good. I've worked at a hobby company that will remain nameless for legal reasons for years. I know you call these Games Workshop stories, but they pertain to the whole industry, really. Maybe rename it? Um, yeah, I could rename it. I, I just can't be bothered, uh, again, getting my wonderful guy who does the thumbnails to change it, to be honest with you. Uh, I might do that. I might change it to Hobby hobby Store Stories or something. Or maybe, if he sees that, he can, he can maybe change it a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys prefer? Games Workshop Stories or Hobby Store Stories? Hobby Store Stories is probably more accurate. So maybe, maybe we, should, we should go with that. I don't know. Collaborative process is what it is. Moving on, indeed. I loved my job and became a manager in my early 20s. I have some awesome memories of running events and generally trying to bring people in into and growing the hobby. I remember there was one kid out of thousands of little memories who was a bit down on his luck, being bullied in high school and all that. His mum was a single... Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm saying mom. It's typed M-O-M. I can't stand how Americans do that. Why is it mom? I'm going to say mom because it's the way it should be said. But mom just sounds like you're a baby. Um, you know, anyway. Mom, I always thought mom in the UK was like an endearing term, term because it's, it's shortened mother. But also like, you know, you call a queen mom or mom or whatever, you know, and I thought that's quite a cute thing. Anyway, moving on. I remember there was a, uh, there was one kid out of thousands of little memories who became who was a bit down on his luck, being bullied and all that. His mum was a single mum and not that well off, so he got one or two models a year, if that. I did a whip round and raffled off one of one army of mine. I've got like nine, for a prize draw which made about six hundred bucks. I spent that on buying the kid a full Space Marine army for the custom chapter he was making and the paints to go along with it. When I gave it to him in an old but clean carry case, he actually cried and I just stood there with my hands on my hips, a bit embarrassed, but also thinking, this is like the best job ever. <laughs> I was like, are you West Coast? This is like the best job ever? Like... <laughs> um... But yeah, no, I, I get that, man. I, I have had plenty of experiences like this over the years. I've shared a few of them on the channel. It really is the best part of the hobby. But I, I do think that being a manager sometimes, the best part of your job is stuff you just invent yourself. You know what I mean? Like, like doing that raffle that you just did there, you know? Or doing a campaign. It's never stuff the Games Workshop or whatever company you're working for have told you to do. It's always stuff that you've thought off of your own back that, you know, has these wonderful, really cool situations happening. Hmm. Lovely Yorkshire tea. One of the things I really missed in the US was Yorkshire tea when I was over there. Anyway, moving on. Scoot forwards a few years and here we are. 
Things are going great. I'm married to a beautiful woman living in a really cool upstate area. She's a lawyer and doing an amazing job there. I have no problem saying she is the main breadwinner and earns almost twice what I do. But she, but she knows I love my job and even my job is no slouch when it comes to pay. It's just she earns a lot. All right. So when I was reading this, first of all, that was my first warning sign here where she, she's earning more than you. Now, I have no problem earning less than, than a woman that I'm with. I'm, I'm very comfortable with that. Um, I just won't be bullied with it. There is a, censure, uh, there's a, a video I did yesterday about, about righteousness and explaining it. You need to be righteous in yourself is what, I'm, is what I, I say all the time. And being righteous means I could earn 10 grand less than you a year. I don't care. I, I still put my value above yours. I, I, I don't, I'm not arrogant. I don't think I'm the best thing to slice bread. But I have to lead. I'm the man in this situation. I have to lead. I don't care what kind of money you're earning. When you're here, in a healthy way, in a healthy way, when you're here, when you're home, you belong to me. I look after you. That's how this goes, right? If I need help, yeah, strong women are great. Like, if I need help, yeah, cool, give me some help, whether it's mentally or, 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 you know, comfort, whatever, brilliant, you know. But my main modus operandi as a guy is to look after you and make sure you're okay, right? When you're in this house, when you're here, I look after you. I'm in charge. I lead. That sounds toxic to some people, but the most healthy relationships I've had, the happiest ones, the ones I still think back and go... My God, we shouldn't have broken up. That was crazy. You know, why did we even break up? Those are the ones where that's been the situation. Where I've been in... A, in where, when we're in the house, doesn't matter what she's earning or what's going on outside, right? I'm not the boss. I'm not the boss. I, 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 it's not one of these, I tell you what to do. It's not that at all. It's not that at all. It's an aura. It's an aura of, here's my guy and he looks. He takes care of me, Right? In more ways than one. Could be fixing the drain. Could be making giving her a back rub. Could be you know, making sure that she's built up for a working day the next day. Could be in the bedroom. Could be anything. Could be cooking. Could be doing whatever. I'm in charge. I decide what we're doing. I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to cook this tonight. I'm going to cook this. Cool. You know, and I sort it out for her. Right? You, you, you don't be overbearing with it. If they want to eat something else, fine. It's all of a compromise. But at the same time... There needs to be an aura there of righteousness, of you being comfortable in yourself. It does work. A woman earning more does work as long as you're righteous in your own self-worth. Because your own self-worth as a man is worth more than any job she could ever get. Right? The problems only come up when your self-worth starts to get attacked and chipped away by the fact that she earns more money than you. The second you're bothered about her earning more money than you, she'll sense it and you look like a weak ass. You look like a pussy. And a woman will not be with a pussy for long. I don't care if she's been with you for 10, 15, 20 years. She will not be with a pussy for very long. Alright? Because she's got plenty of those. She's friends with a lot of those. She needs a man. That's what she needs. Anyway, moving on. Um, we are comfortable and aren't living paycheck to paycheck or anything. Soon, though, she starts to make a few noises about me finding a higher-paying job. This is where I stopped yesterday, because I was too tired, and I was going to get angry, and so I stopped. So this is where I stopped. Um, so she said, soon, though, she starts making a few noises about me find, finding a higher-paying job. Okay. What's going on here, dude? And I'm not in that room, so feel free to call me out in the comment section down below. Tell me I'm bullshit, because you, you have commented on my videos before. Um, like... It seems to me that, that you're not comfortable with her earning more money than you. And that's coming across. It may not be coming across consciously, but subconsciously something's happening here. Where she's like, mm, maybe you should like uh, address that and get more money, you know? Um, everything, that, everything, most of the things that, are, that go wrong with women in a relationship are your fault. Now, don't get me wrong, like, I, I'm a big proponent of male mental health. I'm a big proponent of men, you know... Uh, being uh, humi you know, you know, oftentimes we're humiliated and, and cast down and, and shit like that. I hate it. I'm against it. But you also have to be a man and admit that... Okay, I've said this in a video before, and this is going to be really controversial. You need to train your woman, dude. Like, it's, it's just... 
is what it is. Like, if you're in charge and, and you're the man in the relationship, you got, you're wearing the pants, okay? She knows what's acceptable and what isn't. She shouldn't be feel comfortable enough telling you to get a better job than what you already have if you're happy where you are. That shouldn't be crossing her radar at all, right? Because she knows your self-worth is... is she, she can't attack it. She can't attack that self-worth because it's it's crypt, it's like it's Teflon. It can't be it can't be besmirched, right? And that's it. That you you will never hear a moaning word about the job that you have if you're happy in it, you're paying the rent with it, and you're completely confident in your own self-worth as a man. There's a very good reason why toxic women. Do you know what the first thing that they go after when they're in an argument with you and they're toxic? Your manhood. It's the first thing they go after is your manhood. Because they, they know that that's where, the, that's where the sore spot is. When there's no sore spot there, because you are absolutely righteous in your own self-worth, there's nothing to grab onto. You just look at them like they're a piece of shit. If they start saying shit like that, you just look at them. Like, are you seriously stooping to that kind of a thing? You've lost the argument that much. That That's where you're stooping. That's where you're going with this. Okay, we're done. Like, like we're done. You know that that kind of a thing. You that, you, you need that own self worth, man. Like that, that, that's why I'm getting out of this story so far. Um, it sucks, but it is what it is. But women generally don't start making assumptions like this about you need a higher paying job until until you start giving them signals that you're not comfortable with them earning more than you. Now, if a woman is earning less than you and telling you to get a higher paid job, tell her to go fuck herself, because that's the easiest thing to do in the world. That that that, that is the the main thing that you know. We hear all the time from people is is this, that's the normal scenario, right? The woman's earning less; she wants the man to earn more. Now nah, go fuck yourself. Why don't you earn more? Well, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable where I am, and the bills are being paid. We've got a roof over our heads. Go fuck yourself. Shut up, right? That's the normal scenario. Well, that that was the one that was happening for for tens, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty years in the past. Now, quite rightly as well, by the way, women are earning the same money as men. In most, in most scenarios, in most situations. It's fantastic stuff. But it also means that these dynamics are being switched around quite a lot. And some couples don't survive it. They don't. And that's just, you know, because they can't hack it. Um, she tells me I am not te reaching my potential. Here we go. <laughs> and that there are companies out there who would love to have me. I got a college degree in law, which is where I met, which is where I met her in the first place. Warhammer and the hobby have always been my main passion, though. This sticking point grew over a few years. Arguments started over smaller things sprouting from this one issue. Nothing too serious, just the petty crap couples get into when living in the same space. Yeah, have you have you noticed that, that um, couples who are married and stay together, they have these arguments all the time? I've never known of a perfect couple. I've known of really old couples who love each other to the ends of the earth and they argue all the time because you're with the same person but you've got to come into it with a perspective of these arguments will happen i lost a main relationship right when i was in the u.s because the other person didn't realize that was the case right they just didn't they didn't get it they didn't get look we're living in the, not just in the same house in the same room and we hardly ever leave this room because this is where we work and this is where we, we you know where, where we do all of our, our all of our college work and everything. And she couldn't hack the fact that sometimes there were arguments because we're living on top of each other. We're cellmates, for God's sake. What do you want us to do? You know? Um, some people can't hack it. Uh, but if you stay the course and you get your own place and you, and you live with them and then eventually things will get better, dude, things are going to be just fine. Um, but it seems like you're having a similar situation. But one problem bled into a lot of other problems. Uh, then one day she hits me with it. She's done. She wants to divorce and move on. Jesus. I wasn't expecting that. So I was expecting this to go on a tangent of you arguing all the time. That's sudden. I am flawed as you might expect. And I talk her around to giving us another shot. But this lasts for about three months before I come home one day to find her stuff gone from the apartment. What? She's moved in with her mum whilst I was at work and wrote me a letter saying how sorry she was, but she was but she was out but she was out when she said she was out. Okay, so you mean like when she originally said she was done, she was done. Okay. 
and that I should give her some space. Wow, dude. It sounds like she's given, yeah, she's given you another chance out of, like, pity. Well, not pity, but because she kind of wants it to work, but she knows it's not going to. Fuck, dude. Oh, man. You can tell. Yeah, it, 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 this isn't great. This isn't great at all. I'm really sorry you have to go. I'm sorry for anybody, any dude who has to go through this. You know? It sucks. It really sucks. Fuck my life. <sighs> I did give her space, hoping she'd come around. Only for divorce papers to arrive at the apartment about a month later. Oh, fucking hell. Uh. Dealing with this was not easy. Yeah, no shit, man. And to be honest, the six months or so uh, I went through, it, through this, my work suffered. I, I was not sleeping or wanting to eat or drink, really. I stopped shaving the lot. I was wasting and just didn't want to live anymore, but didn't have the balls to do anything about it. Man. Man, well, you're still here because you wrote this, but, like... Yeah, I'll, time for a pep talk, I think. It came across at the store, too. People were uncomfortable, and most just assumed I started hating the job and didn't want to be there anymore. Finally, after a few concerned phone calls from customers to HQ, HQ began calling me. Over that six months, and telling uh, and and after me telling them the situation, I got called in to go see them. There, they took me through what they wanted from the store going forwards. A complete overhaul that was going to take a huge effort to undertake. Wow, sounds like they're trying to distract you, dude. Sounds like they're trying to throw something at you to, to take your mind off of things. They said they doubted whether I could do it, and asked if I wanted to move on. Ah, I see what they're doing. Reverse psychology, I like it. So they've got you in, they're like, ah, we don't think you can do this, and they're... they're Banking on you going, yes I can, you watch me, you know. Um, my passion for the job clearly was not there anymore in their eyes. I said I wanted to do it and again explained my situation, which they completely accepted. Okay, that's cool, alright, cool. A month later, I was drinking quite heavily and self-medicating. Oh no. I know, idiot. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I can't really, if you're going through it, I can't really judge you for going down this road. I just, you just, you know where it ends. You know where it ends, you know. I just couldn't bear going through the day without it and being without her. I turned up for work sober as a judge one time, but still smelling of booze from the night before. A complaint was filed and they fired me on the spot. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's a com it's a family company. You can't do that. You cannot do that. What one thing I I you know I'm not going to say whether you work for Kings Workshop or not, right? But one thing I will say, if you did work for Kings Workshop, if you turned up under the influence or smelling like you were, you were gone. You were gone. Because they need to trust you around uh, around minors and things like that. Because they they come into the store a lot. That'll be that'll be the reason they use to get rid of you. But it's, it's professionalism, uh, it's professionalism as, as well. If you bring Games Workshop's reputation, I, I mean, yeah, you know, reputation. But you know what I mean. If you bring their reputation into disrepute, you are gone. That is the one thing they will kick you out of the door for quicker than anything else. Bar one thing, which also involves kids, but we won't get into that, right? Bar that. Bar that. I can't blame them. Yeah, neither can I, dude. Uh, neither can I. Yeah, at least you own up to your mistakes. At least you own up to your mistakes, but I, I can't blame them either. Um, if you turn up to work smelling a booze, Games Workshop will literally hurl you out uh, straight away. So, some time has gone past since this point. I now do work for a small law firm in my local area, but I wander through life just aimless and grey, to be honest. Grey is the word. Okay. So you mean like all the colours have been drained out of your world and stuff. Okay. I lost my wife and my perfect job. I even walked away from the hobby entirely the moment they fired me. I just couldn't face it. I have stirrings of wanting to do the hobby again. I have my own place and things. Some stuff is starting to fall into place into my life again. 
I just can't figure out how to take that first healing step. I know this is a lot to place on you, but if you could give any help, that would be awesome, dude. Thanks for listening, Hal. Um, so, here's the thing, man. Here's the thing. Uh, you've gone through some shit, and the first thing you need to do... And this, this is a really good step, by the way. Writing this to me and getting it all out your head is a very good thing to do. What I would do, first, find a therapist. One that you will gel with, one that you're going to get along with. You don't need to stick with that person if, if they're not for you. Just just go on to the next person that you're not in a relationship with them. Uh, try and find a therapist. As soon as you find one, go through your shit. Go work through everything that you have. Talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Okay? And if you can't find one, talk to me or come on the Discord. I've seen you on the Discord before. If you can't, if you can't find them, talk to me. Talk to the talk to the Discord. Come in a come in a group chat. One of the voice chat. We've actually got a really good voice chat group. You know who you are, um, Sai and all them. Really cool dudes. Get, get on with them. Have a little chat to them. Um, I know you've spoken to us before. And I think one time when we were playing Dark Tide, you came on. But make sure you come on, and you have a chat, okay? Because this is serious shit. This is the kind of stuff that can self-delete a guy. I'm just going to tell you that right now. You've already admitted it yourself. Okay? This is the kind of shit that if it, if it stews, it can get worse. You need to realise that this is a fucking illness, dude. This is not going to go away. This is like cancer. You can't wish cancer away. You've got to treat it. And this is exactly the same. Your, your mind's broken, man. Your mind's broken. And your ideals are broken. And your, your goals are broken. So, first things first, find a support group. Find a scaffolding, first things first. A scaffolding can be a therapist, it can be it can be me, it can be the Discord, it can be anything, right? Get places in place to build your scaffolding and then start building your scaffolding around the building that is your life and your, and your mental health. And start building it. Once that's in place and you're talking about things, you will recognize straight away, getting this off your chest, I bet you felt better after writing this. I bet you felt better after writing this. You literally, like, we, we literally just spoke this morning, right? And you said you slept okay. Now, hearing that you slept okay, I'm willing to bet any money that this helped you. That even writing this helped you. Okay, so so don't be thinking that there's this huge undertaking that you, you put, as you put it in the... In the, in the letter, don't be think that there's this huge job on for you to come in and, and start getting your life sorted out. No, it's not like that at all. Everything that you do from here on in to help will help a little bit, a tiny bit. Sometimes a tiny bit is all it takes. So build your scaffolding first. All right. You've already got me, so I'm in place already. Right. There's loads of people in the Discord who will want to help you as well. So there's two. You've got, already got two out of three. You've already got two out of three. Now we just need a, need a good therapist. Go out there, try and find one, get yourself sorted out, right? Number one. Number two is recognizing that trauma. You have to recognize the fault lines in your own brain now because they are there. You have serious scar tissue in your own brain, in your own ego, your own self-worth, your own... The way that you think, the way that you're a man, the way that you go about things. You now are on foundations of sand when you used to be on concrete. And that sucks. It sucks a lot. Um, I went through a similar thing when I came back from the US. One of my main scaffolding things was a channel. That was one of my main things was, was this channel. And it, it grew. It's weird. And I've said, I've said this before. The minute my relationship broke down, you can see the numbers on YouTube start to take off. And I wasn't doing any videos at that time. After I broke up with my missus in, in the US, it took me three months or so for me to come back and start doing YouTube again. But for those three months, there was no content, and people, and the numbers were still going up. It's weird. It was almost like YouTube went, this guy needs a helping hand. You know, and there you go. That's why I'm very loyal to the platform, even though it can be a, a shit show at times. Like, yeah, I don't really stream on Twitch. I don't really do anything. I, I just like being here. I, I think it's great, you know? It's run by Google, which is like a good old biggie, biggie company, you know? But, um... At the same time, like it, it got me through some really hard times, like, and I, I'm testament to that fact. And I wanted to build it for other people, like yourself. If you're not using it, what was the point in building it? So please use it, right? But recognize those fault lines in your own head. Recognize that you have them there. They're not going to go away. You need to treat them. Time will heal them, yes, eventually. 
but we can always speed things along a little bit with our own self-help, okay? All right, secondly, thirdly, sorry, endorphins. Never, ever, 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 ever um, underestimate the power of endorphins. What I, what I mean by that is simply getting out the house and going for a walk can really, really change your outlook on life. Stick, do, do a thing for me over the weekend. Stick some music in and go for a walk. I don't care where you go. Go for a walk. It could be down to a beach nearby. It could be down to a park nearby. It could be to a friend's house. It could be to a gaming cafe. It could be anything. Go somewhere. Walk somewhere a mile or two and then walk back. It helps if you've got a, an activity when you get there as well. Right? So maybe like sit down at an internet cafe or do whatever, right? Get out the house. Do that at least once a day. Okay? I know you work for a law firm, but I also know that you work from home. This is a lot easier for you than it would be for some people. So head out there, go for a walk, get yourself out there, get those endorphins going. By endorphins, I don't mean pumping iron. Sometimes people just don't seem to get that. Like, oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Use your legs, fatty. Walk. Just walk. You don't need to do anything else. Do you know, do you know how beneficial walking is to, to stopping heart disease? And... And getting, and getting endorphins going around your system. G getting these positive hormones going around your system. Changing your outlook. Helping you think through things. Go and walk and think about nothing. Right? Or if you've got a, got a, a thing in your head you're trying to work through. I did this for six months in 2021. For six months I went walking and running. Just to get my ex out of my head. To, to box it away, it took six months of constant mental putting things in the box, putting things in the box and shifting them away, right? It was like it was like I was moving out of an, of an apartment, but instead of having one apartment, every single apartment in this apartment block was mine. And each walk I did, I was packing away one of those apartments. And then when I was done, I detonated the whole fucking thing and it was gone, right? And I'm still not there. I'm still sifting through the wreckage of that, trying to figure out where I am and where I figure things out. But I am in a much better position now than I was back then, right? So that is that is what I, I can I can show you that that works because it does. You know, do your scaffolding, right? Recognize you've got trauma. Very important. Stop being so hard on yourself, and then work on endorphins. Work on getting yourself. Work in putting yourself in a position in an area where you can think about things and start boxing away. That those mental apartments that are in your head before you detonate the whole thing and delete it from your life forever, right? And move on, okay? It's not easy. It's not meant to be easy. It's meant to be hard, okay? If it was easy, everybody would be getting into relationships all of the time if it was easy. This is why people are afraid to get into relationships. This is why you see things like men going their own way and stuff like that, right? It's because they're, they're terrified of meeting women like your ex, dude. Right? Who are the perfect woman. And because one thing isn't right in their life, they detonate the entire thing and walk away. This is why men, men go their own way. This is why they walk away. Maybe you need to do that for a while with women. You know? When, when you finally feel like you're ready. When you feel like you're ready, there's nothing more powerful in this world than restraint, man. And there's nothing sexier in this world than a man who, who, who masters himself. There's nothing sexier than that. Even I find that attractive, and I'm straight, right? But as a man, I'm attracted to being around other men who are like that. If a man's mastered himself, that's that's the sexiest thing in the world, dude. That it really is. So when you finally do get back on the horse and you're ready to go, don't just sleep with the first person who comes along. Walk away. Say no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm I have dick discipline. I'm mastering myself. I'm the guy. I'm the prize. I'm the guy. I'm going to I'm going to figure myself out, work on myself and learn. I want to learn every single day. I want to learn something new. I want to want to surround myself with people and if I can't do that, I I want to read people like Marcus Aurelius. Please read Marcus Aurelius, please. Please 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 please, right? Are you it, it, I I you think I'm kidding? You think I'm kidding? I'm not. Read Marcus Aurelius, read meditations. Head out there and read meditations. Get into Stoicism. Stoicism is one of the things that literally 
save my... It didn't save my life because I didn't have the balls to kill myself. But it, it did save my self-worth. Right? The meditations was one of those things that literally, almost, completely saved my self-worth. Read the meditations. Get into stoicism. Get into, get into thinking about your own life and where it's going. And you know what I love about stoicism? It doesn't give you an excuse. There are no excuses in stoicism. It's your fault. You're a man. Figure it out. But it gives you the tools to start chiseling away at that marble brick that is you until you find you in there. That's what it does. So look into the stoics. Look into stoicism. It's something that I, I, I highly recommend for everybody who's going through mental health and trauma and things. Especially if you're a man. Um, dude, these are written by men for men. It's almost like clinical at this point. Get into it. I love you all a long time. I will speak to you over the next couple of weeks. And if any of you need any sort of help or anything like that, people are always available on the Discord. I'm always available. Um, or I used to be always available. I'm too busy now, guys. It's one of them things that I... I I'm a victim of, of my own success sometimes because, like, I, I have a lot of messages coming in. Uh, if you are really in a crisis situation, feel free to use my my email. It's in the in the description down below. You don't need to be on the Patreon if it's a, if it's a if it's a big crisis and you need somebody. I check it every day at least once. Please front your thing with crisis and capitals, and I will get back to you on the same day. Anything beyond that, and I'll get back to you when I can. It's only within a few days, right? Or you'll be on the next Hobby Nightmares if you want me to do it in Hobby Nightmare or whatever, you know? Um, but I, I'll get back to you as quickly as I can uh, uh, if I do that. Hopefully on the same day. Um, anybody anybody else, it'll be on Patreon. Uh, if you're on Patreon, then you are literally... You have access to me all the time. And uh, if you ask me a question, I'll normally get back to you within a few days. Uh, but if you email me with a crisis scenario, I will... If, if I'm anywhere near my computer that day, I will get back to you, all right? But please don't abuse it. Only for only pull that ripcord if you need it. If there's something really going on, you need talking down from a ledge, I'm here, right? I'm not one of these people who gets you to go on the Patreon and says, I'm not talking to anybody who doesn't want to do that. No, my money's where my mouth is. I'm here. I'm here to help. But please don't abuse it. <laughs> okay, right. Love you all a long time. I'll speak to you later on the, on the Discord and stuff. See you later. Have a good one. Bye.